Hi, welcome to Travelzilla. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and here on YouTube. Previously on Travelzilla, we visited the church of Santa Maria delle Grazie in Milan, where Da Vinci's Last Supper is located. We visited some of Milan's most beautiful squares, and somebody I know has acquired superpowers. Word. <laughs> Okay. And we visited one of the world's most beautiful churches. So, now what? How about a day trip to Switzerland? Let's, Let's go. go! In order for us to get to Lugano, we headed to Milano Centrale, one of the most important train hubs in all of Europe. The average journey to Lugano takes about 1 hour and 35 minutes. Trains depart from Milano Centrale 17 times a day. The fare ranges from 17 to 24 euros each way, and the distance to Lugano is of 61 kilometers or 37.9 miles. One of the best things about traveling in Europe is what the train system, of course. Today we're taking a day trip and going to Lugano in Switzerland. It's gonna be awesome. Join us. The first train departs every day at around 6 a.m. and the last at about 10.30 p.m. The trains are operated by Trenitalia and they're good, comfortable and usually very clean. Are you excited to go to Switzerland? It's good. It's good. It's Dá uma charadinha. The train ride up the mountains is very beautiful, but the impression we get is that the city of Milan never ends because every single town between the two countries is actually linked to each other, with little or no space in between them, forming a huge metropolitan area. Lugano is very close to some major attractions in both Italy and Switzerland. From there, you can easily get to places like Lake Como, for example, or you can go on beautiful boat rides. Of course, you can do the same in Lake Lugano as well. You can also enjoy the beautiful Italian and Swiss towns and mountains nearby all year round. Not only that, but you can also enjoy countless stunning waterfalls, lakes, forests, villages and enjoy the region's incredible food and wine. Well, we have just arrived in Switzerland. For those of you who don't know, Switzerland is part of the Schengen area. But make sure you bring your foreign passport or European ID when you cross the border, okay? Because immigration here is quite tough. Check this out. So guess where we are today? We just arrived in Lugano, Switzerland on a day trip from Milano. Just an hour and a half. It's beautiful here. You know, if you're in Milano for a few days, come to Switzerland. Now, just pay close attention and carry your passports with you because immigration is really tough, you know? They check everybody on the train, so don't mess up, all right? It's amazing, it's a great place, look at that. We didn't have a map of the city, so we were just walking around with no specific place to go. We were just relaxing. The local buildings, the church and the viewpoint were spot on. Such a great place to take pictures and film. Now we found a pretty church, we're gonna check it out. It's called Cattedrale di San Lorenzo, Lugano. It's very beautiful.
Well, on the way downhill, we saw many awesome little shops, but cameras were everywhere. We also saw some great alleyways really well maintained. Shame we came in the fall. I bet this place looks even better in the summertime. Here it is, the world famous Lake Lugano. Lake Lugano is nested between Lake Como and Lake Maggiore and lies partly in Italy and partly in Switzerland. The Italian part accounts for 33% of the lake and the Swiss part accounts for just over 66% of it. The city of Lugano is located on the north side of the lake in the province or canton of Ticino. The surface area of the lake is of 49 square kilometers and it gets down to 288 meters or 945 feet at its deepest point. Somebody wants to eat, but I have no bread for them. The city of Lugano has a population of just over 53,000 residents, making of it the ninth largest city in the country. This part of Switzerland is different from other parts of the country because here Italian is the most widely spoken language, whereas in other parts the main languages can be French, Romance or German. Coming to either Lugano or Lake Como are amazing, great, incredible, over-the-top options for your day trip from Milano. Well, the scenery here is breathtaking. Right there you have some snow in the mountains. If you'd like to see the glaciers from up close, you can take one of Lugano's two main scenic train lines, the Bernina Express, the world's most famous little red train, and the Gothard Panorama Express that links central Switzerland to Ticino, where Lugano is located. From there, you can get to other regions within Switzerland, including the Alps at the border with France, Italy, Germany, Austria and Liechtenstein. Well, it's up to you how far you'd like to go on your Alpine adventure, right? Right there, a new cultural center. I'm gonna try to get there and show some of it, okay? Bye. Well, this is the LAC. LAC stands for Lugano Art and Culture. It's a new arts venue, including the Art Museum of the Italian Switzerland, set to display works by local artists. It also includes a 1,000-seat concert hall and theater venue. And it's also a place set to be home of many local festivals and venues. This monument celebrates the time Franz Kafka spent here in Lugano where he had the idea to write a travel guide to travelers who didn't have that much money at all. This project never really took off, but it occurred to him during his stay in this beautiful city. Most shops and department stores are located in two famous streets in the heart of the city. They are Via Nasa and Via Piscina. They offer a fantastic range of shops from world-famous fashion brands to local restaurants and cafes. In this part of town, you'll find most designer boutiques such as Gucci, Prada, Hermes, so on and so forth. Let's take a look at some of the shops I saw during my stay here in town. Yep, that's a Bentley, baby. It's normal for here. The list of world-famous fashion brands seem to never end. It keeps on going on and on forever. So many expensive shops for a city of only 53,000 residents. Amazing, right? Entering the famous street Via Nasa, you'll find the church of San Carlo Borromeo, built between 1640 and 42. It was restored in the 1950s, but its facade was originally built by Domenico Fontana in 1829. This is a small but very beautiful church with some exquisite pieces of art. Outside the church, the list of famous fashion brands and banks keep on growing until we get to the famous Piazza della Riforma. Okay. 
Piazza della Riforma, the city's main square, has witnessed many historical events, such as past battles, including the one that won Ticino's independence from Napoleon's government in 1798. In the center of this very beautiful square, you can see a yellow and gray building. This is the beautiful city hall, or Palazzo Civico, designed by Milanese architect Giacomo Moraglia in the 1800s. Mais tem. Que lindo, The square is dotted with cafes and restaurants, so enjoy your time here. After eating fast food, we walked aimlessly in the city center until we couldn't bear to walk anymore. From the area surrounding the main square, we decided to check out the parks by the lake once again and then go back to the train station and finally head back to Milan after that. I kept thinking to myself, what do these mountains look like in the summer? Are there still glaciers up the mountains where the weather is warmer? After walking so much and also relaxing in this beautiful city, it was time to head back to the train station because we had to go back to Milan and rest. Well, guess why? Because the next day we had to pack up everything and ride the train to one of the world's most beautiful cities, a place I've always wanted to go to, Vienna in Austria. Well guys, thank you so much for watching this vlog all the way to the end. Please make sure you drop a like, leave a comment, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for your time. You rock! See you on the next video. Bye bye! Had a great day here today.